Welcome to my life as I live it. I'm Army Princess, the mother, wife, and soldier, and I want to share this journey with you. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe now so you don't miss a moment of it. princess here and I am having fun in my chair so don't judge me because I'm in a roly squilly chair in my hotel room and I'm bored <laughs> but I wanted to make a video for you all because like I said in my previous video I've been away in training for 30 days so I am currently in San Antonio Texas in AOC BAM so for the people who don't know, because a lot of my viewers are new to the military. If you're not new to the military, then make sure you comment below how long you've been in or if you know somebody that's been in. But for the people who aren't new, or even if you are new and you're planning on being in the military for at least, I would say, five years, um, this video might be something you might be interested in. So you might want to subscribe. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background. If this is your first time watching me, I am a sergeant in the U.S. Army, and I have been in the military for 10 years. So, there are things that you have to do in the military in order to progress, in order to make rank. There are certain courses you have to take online, and then certain actual classes you have to go to, schools you have to go to. They were called NCOES, but... I think the name recently changed, but for all intents and purposes, I'm going to refer to them, to refer to them as NCOHS. Um, Y'all like my shirt? Heroes don't wear capes. They wear dog tags. Um, but, so I am going to show you all, or kind of give you all advice on how to finesse a NCOES. So this is BLC. ALC and even SLC. In order to get promoted, when you come in, you come in usually as a private or a PSC and you have to do what's called BLC. BLC is a course you go away to for usually 30 days. It teaches you like the basic army, some of the basic army refresher stuff, mm -hmm. and then you can get promoted. Once you get promoted, you make rank, and then in order to make, once you get E5 or sergeant in order to get to the next rank which is staff sergeant you have to go through a course which is called ALC and that's what I just finished um, and then once you make staff sergeant you make sergeant first class or to staff sergeant then you have to go to SLC to make sergeant first class which is the next rank so there are classes put in place at kind of like each rank in order to progress to the next rank and the classes kind of show you what you should be doing once you get to the next rank um, when, when you go through the course, you are kind of categorized as like, you either pass, you didn't pass down here, you get a marginal, and then there's what's called the top 20%, I believe, of your entire class. So based off of like PT and your actual course grade, because you do do presentations and stuff like that, you, they kind of pick out the top 20% of the whole class. And that's what's called Commandant's List or Distinguished Honor Grad. And I guess it's kind of equivalent to like um, Summa Cum Laude and, uh, you know, Valid Victorian and all of that, you know, in your graduating class. The top, the people with the top grades get a special accolade. People try really, really hard to make Commandant's List. Not everybody gets it. Like I said, the top 20% of your class gets it. And then when you get it, it goes on to your ERB. And so it kind of, you know, sets you apart, stands you out from the rest of your class. So people kind of want commandant's list. 
before I even start, I just give you this information on how to make common assets. I do want to put this disclaimer out that I did not make common assets. And I did not make common assets because I did not try hard enough in my PT. I had the grades. I was in the top 20% as far as my grades. But like I said, you have to have PT. You have to have other things incorporated in it to in, be in order to in order to get common assets or to make common assets. So because I had all of the other stuff, I feel, I feel like I'm qualified to kind of explain to you how to get common assets for the next person because I was very intimidated coming here. I didn't think that I could even get close to making common assets because it's always something you hear like, oh, so and so made common assets, but like they were PT studs or they were really really smart. So I just never even put it in my head, which is not something you should do. My foot is going to sleep. Oh God, my foot's going to sleep. But I never even put it in my head that that, that was something that I could achieve. And then coming here and I had the grades for it and I was like, well, if I would have known that, I would have tried harder on my PT test. So I want you all to get confidence this when you go to BLC or ALC or SLC if you're watching this. Um, because it's not that hard to get. Like I said, if I would have known then, I would have tried harder. So these are some of the things that they will be looking at. And I kind of included little clips here and there. So make sure you watch this video to the end of different things that are going to be included when you are trying to make common ops lists in your military school. So, um, you like I said, the first main thing is PT. You have to at least get a 270 on your PT test to even be considered common ops list. So that's the first thing. If you know that you lack in PT at your unit, make sure, make sure, make sure you are stepping your PT game up so that you can at least get a 270. If you are close on height and weight, then you need to start doing some low carb. You need to start working out. You need to get on somebody's Atkins diet. You need to do something to lose the weight because you cannot get a negative counseling statement. That's one of the big things. If you get a negative counseling statement, you automatically disqualify for common odds list. So make sure you are on time at the right place at the right time. Um, they give you hit times a lot of times. It's kind of like basic training with the hit times. You got to be at this place at this time 10 minutes prior. You need to be in the right uniform and you need to be doing what you're supposed to be doing. Good morning, guys. It is currently 420, 421 in the morning, which is pretty doggone early. So I just wanted to let you know to inspect, expect. That when you go to a military school, they're going to give you pretty early hit times um, and pretty fast hit times. So you have to be in formation. We're probably going to run five miles and then come back and have to shower really quick and eat really quick and be in class by 7.50. So please expect to have a lot of hit times, quick hit times. Make sure you're in the right uniform. They put the uniform out on Saturday. Today's Monday. They put the uniform out on Saturday for us to wear to this morning run formation so make sure make sure you are in the right uniform because that is key that is important and make sure you are on time i would suggest 10 minutes prior at least so that's what got a couple people that i know they were playing around late they didn't take it serious and they got a negative counseling statement so that's just too easy to be in the right place in the right uniform at the right time that you should learn from basic training one of the bigger things is your overall class grade now they're going to give you pre depending on your alc and your mos they're going to give you coursework so you will have tests you'll probably have some type of oral presentation my bad i got like a text on my <laughs> my apple watch but anyway so you'll probably have tests and presentations Please, please, please take it serious because people don't take it serious. And it's just, too, I mean, it's just too easy to take the time to study. We're adults. You know what you need to do. Make sure you study. If you have to get in a study group, I suggest getting with a study group because study groups are really what help me out. Um, I'm going to also put y'all on to Quizlet online. 
make sure you check that out for your MOS. In my ALC, I am medical, we had to do two tests and then a oral presentation. So the first test, I didn't do so well, I got an 87. I mean, it's passing, let's say I didn't do so well, but I wanted to get a 90. My second test, I studied, I got with a group, I did Quizlet, and I ended up getting a 90. I think on my last test I got a 94 um and by the second test I kind of knew how like knew what to expect as far as the test so I knew how to study which really helped me out in the military schools you have to make at least a 80 percent 80 percent is passing so if you get a 79.9 and they do not round up then you have technically failed that test so it's a pretty high standard, which but I think it's attainable. So you have to get at least 80% to pass the test and in order to pass the course. So make sure you're taking the time to study. Make sure you get with study groups. Make sure you go online and try to get online material and really, really take it, take it serious. Student leadership. So this is kind of like a big thing and it's good because it will help you prepare for when you are the next rank and you are in a leadership position so we had things like student first sergeant we had platoon sergeant we had nco pt nco pt nco and we had volunteer options so i was my platoon sergeant for my class for my platoon um, and it was really good because it kind of brought me out of my comfort zone. It makes you have to really pay attention to what's going on because you have to relay this information to everybody in your platoon. You have to be on time. You have to account for everybody. You kind of like in charge of people in a small group setting, which is really good. So in military schools, there is something called student leadership. So please make sure, and that actually it's a good thing to volunteer or try to be um, student leadership because it'll actually give you leadership. This was this used to be our platoon sergeant. Can you can you say um, what it's like being student leadership? It kind of sucks because nobody listens to you. Oh yeah, nobody <laughs> listens to you. No, um, well, it's not like a podcast. It's with um, YouTube. Yeah. So, but these things are called leadership, you know, leadership assignments, I would say. And they are weighed very heavily. He heavily. They are weighed very heavily. So you want to make sure that you get a leadership position. I know in my specific ALC, you had to have three superiors and one had to be in a leadership category. Um, the way you get superiors, superiors are your ratings. So you're usually rated on like your test, your oral board, your leadership duties, your PT, and you get, um, let me get my 1059. You get, um, the categories are not evaluated, unsatisfactory, satisfactory, and superior. You want to try to get superior because that's like the highest score you can get in that category. So we had written communication, oral communication, leadership skills, contribution to group work, and evaluation of students' research ability. Those were the five categories that we could get, could get evaluated in. And you want to try to get superior in all those categories. I got superior in four out of the five categories. And I got a satisfactory in oral communication. So, which is kind of weird because I have a YouTube channel and I talk to people, but they graded you on like every little bitty thing and detail. So, make sure you taking that serious. This piece of paper right here, this piece of paper is called a 1059. This is what you get when you graduate the course. 1059, you want to make sure you get a good rating. Basically, it's kind of like an evaluation. And you want to make sure you get a good rating because a good rating will set you apart from everyone in your class and ultimately help you to get promoted because the higher the rating, the, you know, better you look. Be outgoing, okay? That's like one of the biggest tidbits of information that I can give you. Be outgoing. If you're the type of person that sits back, sit in your shell, you kind of are more observant and you don't talk as much, don't don't do that in ALC. Please don't do that in ALC because, like I said, that kind of falls under leadership and group contribution to group work. If you're just sitting back in your desk, 
You're not paying, you not really not paying attention. You're just not con contributing. Then you're going to be looked at as someone who is either not paying attention or doesn't have anything to offer the class. And you get evaluated on that. You get evaluated on your your research ability, your, the way you talk to people, the way you interact with people, what you can provide and contribute to the group. So I know there were a couple people in my class that didn't say nothing like, and they, that may have been their personality is more reserved and more observant. But I try, if I, I got a question or I try to give my input, well, you know, we kind of do it like this because of this and it helped out because of this. Give explanations, give your input because that's how people learn too. Some people don't know what they don't know. And if you put it out there, somebody might be like, hmm, I never thought about that. Or I didn't know you could do it like that. Or that that makes sense. I might try it like that. You know what I mean? So you want to be more outgoing in, in these type of courses. Um, what else? Uh, I think that's pretty much it. I am going to incorporate some of the clips. Our graduation day. Um, just little things, but... Yeah, that's pretty much the gist of how to get commandant's list. Like I said, it's really not that hard at all. You just have to put forth the energy, the motivation, and the determination to, to do it. I am going to put together a video on how to, um, on three tips to help you with PT. I also have a PT, how I increase my PT score video as well. So if you are someone who's struggling with PT, then make sure you definitely check that out. I'll put it up here and then I will list it below as well. And like I said, make sure you subscribe guys. Make sure you subscribe to my channel because I am going to be putting out content weekly for you all. I have people constantly asking me questions, constantly, you know, giving me feedback in the comment section about the army, about the military, and just questions that they need answers to. So make sure you become a part of the Army Princess Platoon so you don't miss out, especially if you're going to an NCOES, especially if you're thinking about making the military your career, especially if you're thinking about joining the military. These might be things that you didn't know you had to do. And if you become part of this platoon, then you will always be informed. So that's all that I have for you guys. If you have any questions, please leave them below and I will see you next week. Bye. Hey guys, so today is graduation day. I'm so excited. As you can see, we're about to start in a few minutes. We're all filing in. And I'm gonna try to get a little bit of footage for you all, depending on the lighting and if uh, my honey can record for me. But I'm just so excited I made it to the end. And if you go to an NCOES, you will know what I'm talking about. You'll have something to look forward for or look forward to. Um, but yeah, it's graduation day and we are about to graduate.